How are you? My name is Joseph Clifford. I'm the director and coordinator coordinator of the cook course, Corner Care. Okay, so what we're going to do today is a brief or short synopsis of combat sports and hand wraps. And so basically, without further ado, I'll kick it off. So my background, initially I come from boxing. I've been involved with boxing since I'm 14 years of age. Loved it from the first days I ever got involved in it. Loved the intensity, the discipline. And today... Although I wasn't a great boxer, those skills and those assets I still use today as an adult. Um, went back to school when I was 32 as a mature student. Graduated in 1996 as a physical therapist, bachelor's degree, diploma in applied health sciences and physical therapy, and um, a higher certificate in strength and conditioning, CSCS. So, I've basically worked in multiple sports, but basically the backbone of where I come from and what I've done over three and a half or whatever decades has been boxing. So boxing has been one of my greatest influences and I've always learned a lot from boxing. But as a therapist, I've flipped through various sports, ice hockey, Irish football. Anybody know Irish football, you will know it's just the ball is just an excuse to assault each other running up and down the field. Truth. So. Um, very interesting sports, lots of contact, lots of injuries. So as a therapist, you're on the money if you ever walked there. I've worked with various champions over the years. European champion Willie Casey, small gypsy, came from southwest of Ireland, uh, Limerick, the traveling community. Uh, European champion over a three-year period, set, set Ireland on fire. People loved him, great character. Walked in camps with the Highlands and Willie Casey for 21, nearly 30 weeks. Uh, so I basically used to run camps from my home because I, I, I used to live in the mountains or close to the mountains so used to do all the strength and conditioning with them so i got to know athletes 2011 phone call from a friend in swedish boxing lived in sweden um andreas michael introduced me to alex gustafsson and we we ran a training camp from here in ireland with andy ryan from team rhino you probably know some of the fighters that have been with andy the likes of neil siri particularly neil siri and, and uh, paul redmond bottom left hand corner was my um uh, as uh, with well, Philip Mulpeter, that was a turning point. As a friend of mine always said in the UFC, Adam Gigley, let your work be your voice, and that definitely was the case with this fight. Philip Mulpeter, main event, was fighting, got a forearm smash right across the cheekbone, had a really nasty laceration, got lucky, stopped the bleeding, overnight became quite popular. Team Rhino, Andy Ryan, put up uh, on the coach's page, you know, all the good work that I did because at the time nobody was using cut, cut, cut men or cut women on, on shows or events and stuff. So I went cold sales and column, which was hard because if any of you ever want to become a cut man in the profession, you got to put yourself out there. You got to work for free. You got to get the experience. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to carry the spit, spit buckets. There's honor and humility in all of this. And all I can tell you is what boxing has given me and what combat sports has given me is a life beyond my wildest dreams. It exceeded anything I could ever dream of. 2013 14, um, ABA brought in the new rule, removed head guards, uh, concussion rates go down, laceration rates go up. And so what they did with the then ex-president and executive committee was they needed to outsource cut men to work within ABA themselves. And so that's exactly what I did. I've worked on the WSB, on uh, various AOB competitions, including the World Championships, the Olympics, 2016 Rio, the first ever cut men ever used in the Olympics. And... Still work with the UFC today, uh, five years on. So I've been with the UFC for five years. So without further ado, we'll move on. So what we're going to do is a systemic approach to building a hand wrap. Okay, boxing hand wraps, MMA hand wraps, bare knuckle hand wraps, and Muay Thai. So that's basically a self-explanatory. That's the content. So Athletic boxing is very much different than other forms of uh, not very much that's an exaggeration it's different in the sense that the actual glove in athletic boxing dictates the length of the sleeve of your hand wrap and also the thickness of the uh, knuckle padding so basically uh, Rio 2016 when they introduced the hand wraps to all the coaches to apply before competition when we apply the hand wraps we found that typically because we were all professional and used to working with professional boxing, we made the sleeves of the hand wrap too long 
and the padding of the knuckles too big and some of the bigger lads like the heavyweights they couldn't get their hands into the gloves with professional hand wraps because uh, the, the actual glove themselves the athletic boxing glove was built for velcro so anybody that's involved in boxing or is on the international scene or is is functioning as a coach uh, with athletic boxing would know that some gloves are not suitable because of the technology in gloves today the glove itself was made to fit the hand with velcro wrap rather than uh, professional padding now that may have changed since 2016 but i remember even in hamburg 2018 there were still issues with the actual padding for the knuckle on the bigger lads so we had to make the padding really small so i'm just going to stop it there what i'm actually doing on that is i'm indicating i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing an athletic boxing wrap and using that as the systemic approach and the reason for that is it's it's smaller than your typical pro wrap in the sense that the sleeve at the wrist is shorter and the padding for the knuckles may be smaller maybe depending on the weight category um and again that comes down to the athletic boxing glove can't reiterate i uh, can't say that enough now what i'm doing is i'm showing you something here and what it is is this so from access to point when you travel through airports and if you bring your cook kit with you which is advisable because you don't want to put it through with your luggage and then your cook kit go on holidays you're allowed six and a half centimeters from access to point so that's just over two inches from access to point around about two and a half uh, inches from access to point okay so if you're traveling uh, if you're in the US it's a whole different gig you're allowed from point to handle four inches in total so the total length of the actual scissors itself is four inch now when you travel you realize just how precious your scissors are and if you do put it through on baggage I've lost <clears throat> because I travel so much with international sport I lost uh, even on direct flights my luggage got lost and then basically you've no equipment and then you're running around to uh, pharmacists and various that are trying to uh, get a land of one so it's um, if you're there to do a job always come prepared put one in your luggage carry one with you just in case okay so that's the actual scissors the next thing i'm going to show you for actually commissioning anything so there you go who would have thought the scissors would have got so much attention but there you go i had to highlight it marker if you are using a marker as a commissioner you're marking off a set of hand wraps what's essential or the best marker on the market is sharpie for its consistency because most of felt tip permanent markers they dry out really quick but the sharpie is one of the best on the market by far anyway gonna stop that there and then just gonna zap it on so professional hand wraps uh, what do we need to know about professional hand wraps well this is where i will show you how to build a hand wrap systemically okay the rules and regulations are important obviously because we have to abide by them so the rules and regulations de depend on the individual when i say individual i mean individual promotion organization state commission so if you're working under a promotions banner that promotion or uh, is working say in nevada state uh nevada state well they they have their own rules and regulations that you have to abide to cross over into another state say if you went into utah or, or utah and you went into california or whatever you cross state or interstate you are walking events maybe some of them have similar rules or slightly different but what you need to do is check in with the rules meeting and make sure you're all fair with the rules and regulations according to each state so I'll, I'll let that roll on and i'll stop and start the tape as we go now The European junior champion and he's just reminding me through no verbal cues and little whispers that have a memory like a goldfish there's Paul over there very talented kid so using his hand now if you're standing and you're in the gym and you're doing a wrap really quickly I'll just stop that there you know get just get some padding make sure the arm is rested uh, I don't know how many times I've seen coaches put on wraps in dressing rooms where the kids arms off the chair or they're stressing their hand their, their their hands are rigid when they're 
getting the wrap on so just get them to relax because remember this is their time this is their prep just just get them to relax and remember you're not there to talk about the foot if you're hired to walk with the team or if you're working uh, with a promotion so you're not a coach so you're just there to wrap a pair of hands so what you do keep the conversation simple best language to use is positive language best days of your life enjoy yourself have fun out there tonight rather than big day stress words like enormous occasion everybody's looking at you blah 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 you know what i mean well some fighters get off on that but others don't but you just have to be sensitive so we use a rule of three when we're wrapping across the wrist so what is that rule of three so three times around the wrist we always start in the same place overlap that by half go around by three overlap that by half go around by three so that's exactly what i'm doing okay use an empire pro bandage five centimeter by two or, or two inch and they come in 10 meter strips so what that would be in metric so okay stop that there so i go three times around the thumb i use a figure of eight so i've gone three times up each one i stack one over the other then i work my way back down and over the thumb okay so what i do is go up, uh, over the thumb under the thumb around the top under the thumb around the top etc just watch there you go and now what i do is work a figure of eight in a crisscross pattern across the hand like so and i do that how many times three why keep it simple and also it's a good way of stabilizing the hand from ulnar and radial deviation now I walk up to make the padding on my knuckles why in pro boxing you would never accept a pair of pre-made wraps and the reason for that is you don't know what's in the wrap now i know in reality that doesn't happen coaches turn up with pre-made wraps a lot of the times in smaller events and even on larger events where they don't commission the undercard or where there may be a handful of commissioners walking a floor or a number of dress rooms they may not have the opportunity to commission every hand wrap so yes i have seen coaches use uh, padding for the knuckles all i'm trying to say to you is use common sense if you're aware that a fighter or a coach uses let's just say there's a rumor going around he has a habit of putting hard things in the wrap well then just make sure you stand over as it's being employed but preferably with a commissioner because if you start an argument in a dressing room no commissioner there you know you may end up the guilty party so and then walk your way up now when i say 30 plus times it depends on the fighter depends on the glove so remember in professional boxing you have choices of two gloves in general smaller events maybe not you just get one pair and you have to you, you have to live with that but i would put 30 plus to make the padding for the knuckle now this is professional boxing which would be similar to k1 kickboxing and also western muay thai when i say western the rules and regulations of western muay thai in some organizations not all obviously so what I'm doing now is, is pinning it down. So what I've done is I've got him to hold his fingers out like so. As I put the wraps, as I wind the wrap around his hands, put his fingers in, and then I just glide it or slide it off his hand. Okay, and then I pin it down just here over the knuckles. And then I roll it. So if any of you have ever had a close relationship with Rizla, or marijuana in the past or present it'll be a dab hand at this except we don't want to make a cone okay just need to state that for the for the thing it's just straight down so good so i'll make a bar it sits exactly halfway between here okay these are the medial phalangeal joints it's the medial okay and the knuckle themselves so it's the carpal phalangeal joint just there so that's it sits about halfway so it sh should sit parallel with the uh these parts of your your knuckles here okay so your knuckles up there these are called your phalangeals the medial phalangeal joint I'll lay it on. so i walk my way back down in a figure of eight go around three times just pin that down Keep walking around and then walk my way back down towards the hand. So, rule of thumb is start at the wrist, 
Work your way up to make the sleeve, back down into the thumb, around the thumb, figure of eight across the back of the hand, and then basically what you do is you make your your, your crisscross pattern, as we've said, and then basically you build your pad off the fingers. After you build the pad off the fingers, what you basically do is quite simply you um, roll it back. Once you've pinned it down, hold it down. Would say go go around the three times. And then walk back in a figure of eight and then finish around the tom and walk your way back up this sleeve. That's exactly what I'm doing. Any of you want any of this information, I put it all up on my YouTube channel, Minute Medicine Man. Now I'm just gonna stop that for a second. Now, I'm not a fan of constantly winding the tape around the wrist and the hand, but in the case where you're in a dressing room where you have a number of fighters to do, you got to get a pair of hands done in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I mean, a pair of hands. Okay, you got to get it done. Well, then this is probably the most effective and fast way of doing it. It's like a speed wrap. I'll just let it roll on. Now, what I do now is I walk in a figure of six around the tom. Okay, so I start, I go around that way, and then equally go around the other way. I go clockwise and anti-clockwise, and the reason we do that is to give the tom, or the tom, far more stability. Let it roll on. Now, the rule is to bandage by two inch, or that would work out at around about 13.9 meters by uh, 5 centimeter. Now, they say that in terms of, uh, that's bandage, gauze, I should say, that's gauze. But in terms of tape, and the use of tape, 10 feet. Now, 10 feet is about 3 meters. That's not a whole lot of tape. So, so far, that's a 13 meter roll. Okay, half of that. See, so basically, I'm nearly down to half that roll. So I would have exceeded the amount of tape that I needed to put on the hand. Now, I have never, ever, the tape just there for a second. I've never seen a commissioner come out with a measuring tape. However, if the other corner opposes what you're doing and the amount of tape that you're using, and you are in a state where it does, it states clearly that you can only use 10 feet of tape by one inch, and you've used excessive amounts of tape, they have the right to cut it off. I'm just saying. Okay, so what I'm doing now is a little bit controversial. Now, again, for a speed wrap, I'm working under the bar, and then what I do is I twist the tape, okay, like so. Uh, it's less than 5 mil. Some organizations say 1.25. Others don't identify the width that you need to place between the fingers. They just say you can use tape between the fingers. But there's nowhere in the rules where it says that you can't rope between the fingers. It's not roping across the knuckles or an area where there's going to be contact. It's between. It's like a canal or a bridge between between the knuckles. Okay, so I'll let it roll on. If the commissioner is not happy with that, if the other corner is not happy with that, just simply, I'll stop it, just cut the ends of it. Take it off and then just apply it. Just tear 2.5 or, or, or uh, 1 inch and a half. And then just apply it through the fingers. Equally, it's easier if you just buy a roll of one inch, sorry, a half inch. You buy a roll of half inch or else uh, 1.25 centimeter and just put it between the fingers. Now what I'm doing is walking in a crisscross pattern from the bottom to the top. Now the British Board of Boxing Control and the EBU, they, they're now stating that you can use unlimited. So as much tape and bandage as you want. And for a professional boxing wrap, you know what? Makes sense. A lot of the times when the rules and regulations are being made, I scratch my head and wonder, do the people that make the rules actually ever apply them? Okay. And that's it. And the reason you do that, again, is to prevent ulnar and radial deviation. Okay. And then basically I finish it off by just stacking it, going across the bar, make a fist, just for circulatory purposes, and walking my way back down. And folks, that's it. And that really doesn't change regardless of type of wrap. So I'll move on one. So an MMA hand wrap. 
Okay, so what's interesting about MMA? Well, generally speaking, when you walk into a dressing room, if you're working with commissioners on bigger shows, you need a commissioner there to actually stand over the rap as it's being applied, regardless if you're a member of staff working for the organization. That's one. That's not true of all organizations, but some. So you just need to see what their systems are and work with the uh, commissioners. Because remember, you're on the same team. No egos, just get on with it. There should be a triad of testing for athletes in terms of fingernails and toenails before they walk onto the field of play, meaning the area where the fight goes on. And the reason for that's quite simple, right? If I check fingernails and toenails, commissioner checks fingernails and toenails, and then the pit ref checks fingernails and toenails, there's a triad of tests to make sure that that, that, that athlete hasn't turned up at the side of the um, octagon, if it's UFC, ring, if it's IMAF, because they're calling now the cage is not, not the nice word. So ring is now being used, which is a little bit confusing. But if you if the athlete appears at the side of the ring, at least there's been, you know, a number of checks beforehand. So you don't have to stop and clip nail. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. Yeah. I'll do something else. So again, using my Empire Pro Tape 5 centimeter by 10 meter. Now, under the unified rules of, uh, of MMA, depending on which state you're in, Okay, it clearly states that you can only use uh, 10 yards, 10 yards by 2 inch. Okay, so that's less, that's around about 9 meters. Okay, 9 meters by 5 centimeters of soft gauze or bandage. In some, now, when you travel from state to state, as most Americans are aware, that's involved in the fight game, one of the bone of contentions has been the actual the difference in rule from state to state be, making it a little bit confusing for referees and officials rather than having a universal rule that covers all now some states like california may adopt rules from other states uh, say new jersey or somewhere over on the east coast or whatever it is i'm just using it as an example and they may simulate those rules and same with other states so you just again you have to check when you get or you're working with an organization okay what's the house rules What's the state rules, whatever, and um, what are we abiding by what we're doing today? So, yeah, because at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do uh, uh, in MMA because you're working as an official because you're hired by the promotion to work uh, as part of the uh, promotion is to end up looking like an ass because you, you, you don't know the rules and regulations yourself if challenged by a coach. I'll let it roll on. So, again, I walk my rule of three, three times around wrist. And then three times around so on. Okay. Super slow. Yeah. Demonstration purposes. I was keeping you all in mind when I was doing this. So crisscross pattern three times. It's the last time or should be. And then build my way up three times around the knuckle and then build a wrap up from there so in other words I'm going to use the fingers as I did earlier on to walk up up and around okay walk my way back down again so again I'd only go around around uh, uh, 20 times but it just depends on the size of the hand if somebody has larger fingers and they spread them like so, you'll use far more bandage. So you just need to make sure you eyeball it. A much more accurate way of doing it may be to use, say, half bandage. So that would mean you have a half a roll to wrap the hand if you're walking under, or less than half a roll. Walking certain rules, unified rules of MMA. Use the same principle, roll it back. 
like so because it makes a lovely tidy mass just over the knuckles not a big deal and then just pin it down go over it by tree but I'm careful I'm making sure that whatever I put on in terms of the wrap that it's not too thick and it can fit an MMA glove so we've already tried the MMA gloves on she's a bit of space around the knuckles we've already looked at that so working as as a professional these are things you need to check is the glove the quality of the glove and the amount of uh, if it's a toy fit for the athlete you need to adjust your wrap to fit into it so remember it's always about the athlete but if you could uh, again one of my guys with the cup profession is that we can put on a t-shirt call ourselves a professional with no education whatsoever so you know just spend a little bit of time and energy learning the game and then you can contribute positively to the cup business and I'll just finish anyway we apply the tape over in the same way nothing changes But remember, if we're working under some rules and regulations, they clearly state that you can only use 10 feet of tape. So, and some even less than that. So I'm just using that to wind up around the wrist. Because remember, the three most injured areas in the hand. Points are the metacarpal phalangeal joint there, and the knuckles. So. I don't want to go too many times around the tom and then I just build it up from there and then I weave it through the finger just like a boxing wrap okay you'll see me doing that all right make a bar tidy up loose ends get rid of the air bubbles it's imperative and again what I'm going to do is rope why am I doing that speed wrap and then again you have to make sure that the commission is good with that as we walk as part of the team with commissions if they don't object to it that's okay They have a gripe, but these tape rules, they don't take it. Well, then you just don't do it. Just tear the tape in half. The reason why I do it is because I walk off the same roll of tape start to finish. I don't tear it off strips. I don't stick them to the walls. Don't do any of that. And the reason for that is if I'm walking an event and there's 20, 25 names on the card, and same, we were out in Bahrain in the crisscross pattern. So nothing changes. Okay, it's just a smaller, shorter wrap with less uh, content, less bandage, less tape. So we were out in Bahrain, we processed something like nearly 600 pairs of hands. Because nothing changes on the wrap. It's really just a smaller version of the pro wrap. So, bare knuckle. Some of you may have an opinion about it, as do I, self, uh, as do I do myself in terms of facial disfigurement. Uh, facial disfigurement being one of the biggest gripes I'd have with it. Uh, in terms of concussion and longevity with research, in other words, with time with research, it's only then that we'll know just how dangerous the sport is. The key thing is, I would say, and it will take time and numbers, in other words, X amount of fights and fighters over a number of years before they can actually come up with research that you can stand on and say yeah this is 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 uh, quantifiable this is good stuff the amount of hand injuries what i predict the amount of hand injuries facial injuries the likes of eye socket um you'll see far more fractured probably f uh, jaws far more fractured um, um the arch zygomatic arch um all that kind of stuff you'll see far far more of that You'll also see athletes probably tending to switch to the body more. And the reason they'll do that is basically because of the pain that their hands are hurting. So I would say the lifespan of an athlete who's bare knuckle, I, I, I just can't see over a period of time how they can keep their hands good, okay, without breaking something. Metacarpal phalangeal joints, carpal joints, whatever, you know, so... And God knows what's happening to the head, but again, we'll have to wait until we have a number of years behind us where we can say that the research is outstanding and it's not a safe sport. So, the wrap, let's get on with it. So, same thing, go around the wrist three times, two, th 
three i'll go overlap it by by half because remember you can make a bigger sleeve on these two three the rules and regulations state in bare knuckle fighting that you can tape bandage and tape the wrist thumb and mid hand no gores within an inch of the knuckles okay so we walk our way up so three thumbs around the thumb okay and there we go and then walk your way back down again so the tape they usually use white zinc oxide tape then to um, to go over the top of the bandage that's quite simple to use so I'm using a branded Empire. Again, Empire tape, yeah, I know I'm sponsored. You can see it on the front of my shirt. But the reason I use them is because they've had uh, over a decade experience working with industrial uh, tapes. And so they've come up with tapes that are actually, for the outside of gloves, that can adhere to the glove regardless of moisture and uh, The thing I like most about the tapes is the forming, but the adhesive qualities in the tape are far better than others, where others unravel, okay, or else too thin, they're not rigid enough to provide proper support. So again, what I'm doing is using red tape, blue tape, just for identification purposes, okay? So I'm just flipping it over the top. Okay. And there you go. That's pretty much it. So you're not allowed to wrap. Well, I'm trying to. You're not allowed to wrap from the contact point of the knuckles. One one finger with back or one inch. Okay. You're not allowed to put bandage or tape across the knuckles. Bare knuckle. So Muay Thai. Muay Thai hand wrap. So, when Muay Thai is run using Western rules for bandage and tape, it's similar to a pro boxing wrap. No difference. Okay, no difference whatsoever. When it's run under some other organizations, WMTO, World Muay Thai Organization, and one of the gripes I'd have with this sport is what's considered normal. So rubber glue tape is similar to plumbing tape allowed to be used uh, to cover the actual bandage itself. You know, I just scratched my head and, and, and I'm trying to think, what, oh, it's, just, it's just beyond me. Anyway, again, the problem I'd have with it are coaches who environmentally and culturally have le true learned behavior stack across the knuckles. Or if you are in parts of Asia or Thailand itself, and I lived there from 98-99, uh, you'll see sometimes Thais place ring of steel, a piece of steel, roll it into the actual bandage, or else stacking tape, surgeon's tape across the knuckle, or else roping um, zinc oxide tape and then rolling that up really, really hard into a solid, hard, circular mass and placing that in the bandage. So, um, you know, getting repeatedly hit with a solid object wow it's just it, it just goes beyond me how we can allow teenagers and very sort of get them into the habit of hand wrapping like that and then going out and receiving it um so again i respect uh, what i do respect is the sport and the actual the athletes who are gladiators in the sport as a stand-up striking sport there is nothing like it i mean nothing like it it's one of the most effective forms of stand-up striking by far it has elements of grappling um anyway elements of grappling just had to say that it's 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 just the culture with hand wraps and that's really it the safety elements so if you look at other organizations not so dissimilar but they say you can use 6.5 yards of bandage by two inch okay 
to wrap the hands. That's not a whole lot now, to be honest with you. And then it goes on to say about using adhesive tape or surgeon's tape, 2.5 centimeter by uh, two and a half meter. So if you really look into that, okay. So 2.5 is one inch uh, by three yards. And that's not a whole lot of tape to put over the top of a hand wrap, honestly. So again, the people who actually use the rules or sorry, write the rules aren't necessarily the people that actually apply them. So communication is key. Anyway, fantastic sport. Uh, I'll just move on one under the summary. Summary. Regardless of type of hand wrap, read the rules. Depending on state or organization or wherever you are, you need to ask. Now, don't be surprised if sometimes if you're working for smaller organizations, even medium-sized organizations, if nobody knows. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if you're working with a reputable organization and there are no commissioners in the room when hand wraps are being applied. So what you need to do is take the incentive and be responsible for the fighters that you represent and go into the other dressing room to watch what the opponent's putting in the wraps. You have the right to do so. Okay, so commissioners can't see everything, even if they do attend the events. So you could be our eyes and ears. Attend the rule meeting, the rules meeting, and ask lots of questions. That's important. Always in, uh, avoid by the rules and regulations goes without say. You are as well to stand over the opposite corner as they apply hand wraps, as I've already mentioned. Don't take it for granted that the commission attending the event see everything. So let's use athletic boxing as an example where there's two commissioners working on a floor with 40 fighters. Red, blue corner, one commissioner is in with 20 fighters. The other commissioner is in the blue corner looking after 20 fighters. So all you can do is circle the room. You can't stand over every wrap. So if you see something as one of the coaches, take responsibility and say it out loud because your kid may be on the end of that wrap if there's something untoward being done to the wrap to cause harm, right? So be our eyes and ears and help. In professional boxing, it's generally a whole lot different in the sense that the uh, there are commissioners to go around. In professional and other professional, sometimes they're over a large area or else there may be and this may include professional boxing, professional MMA. There may be commissioners assigned to fighters in various rooms, but the fighters may be spread out. Spread out um, and so basically trying to run from room to room or commission it can be quite difficult. So again, be our eyes and ears. On the bigger, the biggest promotions, the biggest, it's a whole different story. A commissioner will stand over every hand wrap being applied. And I'm talking about the UFC and from personal experience. They're there from start to finish. Right. Ultimately, the fighter is the most important person. Whatever they want, they get within the rules and regulations. So don't forget them. Right. Because they're the reason we turn up. There's no other reason we're there other than to make their journey five star. Okay. So I hope you agree with that. And then moving on lastly. Thank you. Okay, big up to you. Thanks for putting your ass on the chair. Really appreciate it. If you want this and more cool tips, please just uh, contact me on my email, minutemedicineman at gmail.com. You can equally have a look at the website. Still under construction. Guess who's building it? Yep, still doing it. www.minutemedicineman.com. Uh, if you want to contact me through Instagram or whatever, you want to look at my stuff on Instagram, Remember, uh, it's Minute Medicine Man, and then Twitter, it's at Irish Cutman, and Facebook, it's Joseph Clifford or Cutman Minute Medicine Man. Okay, until the next time, stay safe, be good, talk soon.